Steve, let's get in-depth analysis. What are the implications of the case? Michael Danby is an Australian government legislator who heads the Parliament's Foreign Affairs Subcommittee. Mm -hmm. Michael, good to have you with us on the show today. China has refused a request Hi, from Australian government to monitor the entire case. That's a cause of concern, isn't it? I mean, how free and fair can the verdict be? Well, uh, we have many doubts in Australia about this trial altogether. Just as your correspondent said, uh, many people will think it's political altogether because uh, after all the Chinese legal system is ultimately responsible to the party. But the Australian government has said that uh, it's very disappointed that a pre-existing arrangement they had with the Chinese government to uh, have this trial uh, open to uh, at least our officials is not being proceeded with. Some are not expecting the trial to, to last very long, prompting them to suggest that perhaps a decision has already been made. What's, what's the sense you're getting? Well, I mean, how do they know that the evidence is going to uh, take three days? Uh, um, it does really seem to be a strange system of uh, justice to us Australians. The uh, public relations for China, uh, and, uh, as your reporter said uh, in the, the build-up to this, uh, uh, this interview, that the, the two-way trade between the countries is, is proceeding. But the public relations disaster for China in Australia, there's a full-page article today here about how uh, people are subject to confessions and uh, uh, the Chinese uh, jail system for, uh, for foreign executives. This must be terrible for uh, people who are contemplating doing business uh, with China. Now, they may have got away with it, uh, uh, with the, the, the timing of this trial and actually proceeding with it now, but it uh, seems very unfair to Australians and it will, will, will get worse. Um, uh, one doesn't know where the, the implications of this will, will uh, ultimately come out. Michael, would you say that whose prosecution is more political than anything else? If you could answer that in 20 seconds. Yes, having uh, being arrested at the height of iron ore negotiations and then doing this actual trial while the chief executive of Rio Tinto is in China speaking to the number two in the Chinese Communist Party is very political. All right, Michael, we'll pick up the discussion after the break. Michael Danby, Australian government legislator who heads the Parliament's Foreign Affairs Subcommittee. We're off for a short break. Back in two. Stay with us. Pick up our discussion on the Rio Tinto trial with Michael Danby, an Australian government legislator who heads the Parliament's Foreign Affairs Subcommittee. Michael, what are the options open to Australia if who is found guilty? Is the government likely to appeal for him to serve his sentence in Australia? Is that even open for appeal? Um. I, I don't uh, know whether we have an agreement between the two countries to exchange people, but that I don't think really uh, interests us. So I think the Australian government was very strong on getting observers at the trial and very disappointed that uh, uh, both sections of the, uh, the trial are not open to uh, the Australian media, who are very interested in this and will have the television cameras outside the, uh, uh, the Shanghai court. Um, the the uh, other options are, uh, you know, that... Uh, there are 50 mining leases that I'm sure over the next two or three years that China will want to uh, uh, you know, uh, buy into. Um, the Foreign Investment Review Board makes decisions to, uh, makes recommendations to the government, but the government doesn't necessarily have to accept them. I'm not saying that the Australian government will listen to me, but that's uh, uh, an option too. I mean, China needs Australia just as much as uh, Australia needs China. and. Uh, um, it needs uh, foreign businessmen doing business in China without fear or, fear or favour. This is sending a terrible message from the Chinese government to not just Australian investors, uh, but to uh, uh, the international economy and to uh, people from Western countries in general. Uh, Michael, any lessons to be gleaned from this incident? Well, a lot of uh, my uh, friends who are in middle level business in Australia often decide to make investments in China only through uh, Hong Kong holding companies because of uh, the legal ability to get, to, uh, get their rights via uh, the Hong Kong courts. Um, so that's, uh, that's one issue for medium level business. I don't think uh, Rio and BHP and other major businesses are in uh, a similar position, but uh, uh, people have to be very cautious. They have to realise that they're not, opening, uh, they're not operating in open democratic society. China is a closed society run by the Communist Party. Ultimately, 
court decisions, as uh, Wang Jianshun, uh, the chair of the Chinese uh, uh, Supreme Court, said recently, uh, courts have to take into decision uh, account decisions of the party. Um, people have to realise that they're operating in such right. circumstances right. and that ultimately is not good for trade between uh, us uh, and China. Michael Danby, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much.